Hello and welcome back, I'm Dren Alter and this is Jamestown Plus for the PlayStation 4. This was originally a PC release back in 2011, but it had loads of you know DLC content updates and things and eventually they deemed it worthy to have a console release. So this turned up on the PlayStation market like uh, uh, three months ago, I think? May, I think this was released, so 2015, with no warning. Like, I, 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 maybe in other countries they were, I can only speak from the perspective of the UK, but there was no advertising for this. It did nothing on the PlayStation Network at all. Uh, I just I just found this whilst perusing um, through the digital download store. Uh, I only clicked on it because I misread it as Janestown and thought it was a Firefly reference. It isn't, but I'm just so glad that I accidentally clicked on this. This is an old school esque sort of 16 bit era pixel art vertical scrolling shooter, uh, just reimagined for the modern gamer. And this is the first screen you'll come across. So you've got lots of pretty pixel arty things going on here. There's a um, fairly bare bones options menu down here. Where you've got things like pixel perfect, which puts it in its desired aspect ratio, I suppose, to which it was designed. But I didn't pay for those two extra inches for nothing. Bound chicka. So I'll be using it in full screen mode. There is a uh, fast mode, which is like an alternate telling of the say, the story. The game's story is interesting. Usually, you know, stories in games like this are throwaway. You don't care. It's the gameplay that matters. The, you know. But they did something interesting with it, and it explains, the, you know, the visuals and the style of the game. So we'll we'll come back to that. But that's a farcical telling of that that story. Hardcore mode. You, you have to be some sort of sadist to want to use that, but I haven't even unlocked it yet. That's um, There's a lot of unlockables in this game. Again, we'll come back to those in a second. You've got view credits because you can view credits. Free cursor, so you can have it like it was when it were a mouse, if, um, if you want. I don't. View license, which I've never seen in a game before, ever. So you can view the licenses if that makes you sleep better at night or whatever. We don't care. Very basic audio options, and that's that's about your lot. Uh, is of course a tutorial, which, <laughs> as a man, I can't click on because <laughs> whoever uses the tutorials, that's like buying flat pack furniture and reading the instructions. No, 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 no. And start game. And there it is. There's your map. There's five original main stages. You can only access the first two, I think, to begin with. And you've got the different difficulty settings there. You could represented by colours at the bottom here. I'll show you. So you've got your difficulty, which starts off a normal. There is no easy. Uh, normal, normal is kind of easy to be fair for this kind of game. It's it doesn't it doesn't kick you in the balls quite as profusely as these games used to. Uh, but the difficulty does scale quickly. But well, like the difficulty scaling in this game is done well. It eases you into the concept. It doesn't just you know it's it's not like the old arcades machines that just used to give you the one easy level. Go, did you understand that? Did you enjoy yourself? Good. Now give us your money. Uh, it, it eases you through right up to judgment. Judgment is the hardest difficulty setting and I haven't unlocked it yet because you have to finish every other stage in divine difficulty which is bloody hard and yet you can't progress unless you do the different difficulties like you'll notice later on like some of these stages there is no easy. It's gone. You can't you can't do those easy so you've got to do the stage before it in the difficult before you can move on and do that stage at all. There's two bonus stages which came with a PlayStation version which are on the moons of Mars. It's all on Mars, that's what I was going to talk about the story, wasn't I? It's all set on Mars. The story is a retelling of the first colonists of the Americas, which was in Jamestown, hence the name of the game, except instead of on Earth, it's on Mars. So it's alternate history, all set in the 17th century. Uh, sort of style. The whole game has got that sort of steampunk 17th century style running throughout it, which is just gorgeous, and you'll see. Uh, yeah, and the enemies are Spanish and the indigenous Martians. And that's about it. That's about it. You play some famous historical characters, like you can play Sir Walter Raleigh, and I think Guy Fawkes is even in here at some point, because he is. So, yeah, it's interesting. It's different. They've, they've, had, they've made a little bit of effort into it, which they didn't need to do. Like, this game would have been fine without any effort made in the story department whatsoever. So, yeah, it's, it's good that they threw that in there. This was developed and published by a company called Final Form Games, which was basically three guys that did this with their own time and their own money, completely off their own back. So, yeah, I applaud them so so hard because this generation of consoles specifically needs more games like this so well done well done those men uh, you've got a few more interesting things down the bottom here you've got the gauntlet which is just brutal you have to run the stages in a row with no extra lives so just do it in one go or fuck off there is no in between and then there is the super gauntlet which is exactly the same but it incorporates some of the bonus stages from the moons of mars uh, and if you go to launch i think you can do that yeah if you had difficulties um it adds stages and so on and so forth Again, not unlock judgment yet. And then there is the Shoppe, or what I've been calling the Shoppe for a long time. I now have it on, on good authority that um, that is just the old spelling for shop. So, 
it's not shoppy. It's just shop. Uh, in the shop, there's all your unlocker burbles. These things uh, go from different types of ship. There are three different types of ship. We'll come back to those shortly. You can lock different types of shots, so that's your main cannons, and then you can unlock challengers. Um, the way the game unlocks work is you progress a certain amount in, a, in within the game itself. You will like uh, meet certain criteria, and then you unlock the ability to buy these things, so you don't just get them. Uh, and then you have to earn credits through being awesome and spend them in the shop to you get the, you know, there's, there's two stages to unlocking things in this game. It's not just ta-da, which is, you know, it adds an extra level of challenge to the game, which is an already fairly challenging game. So let's get into it. I'll only show you the first couple of stages because I don't want to ruin too much. We'll go with uh, difficult difficulty because talking whilst playing is going to be hard enough without, without upping the challenge level to blah, blah, blah. I'll show you the divine difficulty level just before we finish and some of the challenges as well because they're even worse. Um, but for now, we'll keep it simple. So there is local multiplayer in this, up to four player. There is no online, which is a shame, but I, I get why they did it. Because uh, it, it, it's, it's arcing back to old schooly type games. And there is something to be said for being sat next to your friends when you're playing them. I mean, there's a whole generation of people now that will never know what it's like to be playing a, a racing game or a, a fighting game and being able to lean over to your buddy next to you that's kicking your ass and just mash his keypad with your hand. Just, just just, ruin it for him. Or playing Streets of Rage, which is primarily a co-op game, but you could hurt each other. So, you know, your friend had accidentally, he told you, kick you several times, and you, you could just turn around and punch him in the face. And that's lost, which I think is sad. Yeah. Bygones. So, here's, yeah, here's where you start. You can change, you can remap your controller from here. Um, I've been playing this like pretty much solely with the Venom Arcade Stick, which I've had to stop using now because it's too loud for recording. It clicks like a motherfucker. So I'm using the control pad, so you'll have to excuse the learning curve. Uh, control pad works absolutely fine, though. Uh, there, there, is, there isn't a lot between it. I just like to play these old arcade style games with an arcade style pad. It makes me feel like I'm 10 years younger. And this is where you select your ship. Like I said, there are three different variations. There's your classic down here, which you'll recognize if you played these kind of games before. You know, sort of your Raidens and your robo lests. Um, you just click on these and what you see is what you get. Like as soon as you click on that, game starts, that, that's your setup. You get the Armada selection, which is a little bit more complicated, where you get to choose your, there's a little bit more customization. You can choose the different types of like your main cannon um, or all things that have unlocked, so just different variations of bullet patterns. And then uh, a couple of variations of your special weapon, which is nice. And then you get the Treason, which I believe was also another DLC thing, which is where the Guy Fawkes comes into it. Uh, and these are just strange ships. They've just done some odd stuff with this and gone, hey, we've tried something different, there you go. And it'll tell you at the bottom, like the setups, like there it'll say Beam, first style performer, whatever. Underneath it'll say standard. So standard is standard. You'll probably recognize it. Advanced means um, there's a little bit more of a learning curve when it comes to using it. So maybe a little bit more skill involved into using them properly. Um, same same story with the trees and, and all the um, all the Armada ones are customizable. So it's up to you how complicated you make them. Uh, there is also these. You can unlock the fate and the fortune. Uh, just random variations. Every time you die, you'll come back with a different ship of that class. Which makes just multiplayer um, co-op a big fun mess. Uh, there is no other reason for that other than <laughs> look what I have to deal with. Uh, so it's just, it's just, just, just a bit of fun. Which again is nice. I'll go with the standard because again I don't want to ruin anything extravagant for you, and I know how to use this one. You get these little pixel art slideshows explaining the story between each and at the start of um, every round, which is you know if, if you like that kind of thing, it's nice. If you don't, you can just skip it. Just hold any button down and it goes away. You can even turn it off from the menu, I think. So it doesn't come up at all if you just want to rush through the game without any of the story getting in the way. What? Upon the eastern frontier! There's some red coat. There's some Martian, <laughs> Martian scarecrows. And there you go. Uh, there is only one speed to this. Uh, you can't change the speed of your ship up or down. There's, there's no customization in that sense. Um, because all the ships have their own pros and cons. So some are faster than others. And it's a, you know it weighs off against... How good your weapons are, that kind of thing. Uh, you have to collect these little cogs. You'll notice that they drop in. And that powers up that little bar in the top left-hand corner, which we'll come to in a second. That's This is your main weapon. All, all, all the ships have different versions of the main weapons. Then when you've got your Thethel, which is whatever you chose your special be. It's usually a bit more powerful, but it, it slows your ship down in this case. Like, I, Oh, cock. Wasn't paying attention. Uh, 
it is really hard to play and talk at the same time. I have, I have set myself a challenge. Um, yeah, your special is usually a little bit more powerful, but it has adverse effects. Like, I can't move very quickly whilst I'm using it, so you have to be careful when. This is the most standard and straightforward one to use, of course. Like, they do get a lot more complicated than this. Save the redcoats! Yeah, and then there is your vaunt, which, like I said, now that little uh, meter in the corner is full. Wait for these buggers to fire some bullets. Whoop! Right, that collects all the bullets, and now that meter starts going down. You have a... Woo! <laughs> okay. Okay, I can talk again. Um, you have to try and keep that meter up. The more of these cogs you collect, the more you can knock that meter back up. Whilst it's on, you get a, a score multiplier and a damage multiplier. So you do more damage and you get a lot more score. So that's how to play the game. You, ideally, you want to go from start to finish, having only used the Vaughn once. If you catch yourself in trouble, like you can do it once. Like, oh, it's a boss fight, so this will be a good time to show you. If you catch yourself caught out again, you can do it again but you lose the multipliers immediately. That's just to save you if you're in a tough situation. That's like a panic bailout button moment. And there's not more... Oh, focus, focus, focus. There isn't much more to it than that. Which there doesn't need to be. You don't need to overcomplicate a game like this. Uh, a game like this is all about the... Oh, the look and the gameplay. How, how, how much fun is it? Is it a lot? Great, keep playing. Are you not having any? Then stop playing. There is no point in this video game. I've annoyed him. Whoop, I know what he's going to do. These ones are homing. These ones caught me off guard so many times when I first started playing. Uh, you beat him up enough, these things drop out of him, and then that's like insta-vaunt. Whee! Ha! And then you get this screen, which is just sort of how competent were you. So you get a little star rating at the top there. It gives you a little name. I'm the credit saver. Okay. Uh, privateer, which is your level, I assume. And, and then... Just all your performance stuff and your total gold down there. Well, it's not gold. It's called Ducats. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. But your total Ducats at the bottom there. Uh, skip story, because, again, don't want to ruin too much VR. And then straight back to mission select. So you can just select a different mission from there. So I'll select a different mission and a different ship. Journey through the dark sector. I've changed my ships up now. We are now playing as part of the gunpowder, treason, and plot bonus pack. So I can throw exploding barrels at people. I like this guy because he spawns multiple barrels, as long as you don't use them. So you can have three circling around you. They don't protect you, um, they fire extra bullets each, and when you are in a jam, you can just launch them out. And if you click once to fire it, click again to explode it, so you can do a lot of damage to one sort of area in one go. Or just fly across the screen, um, clearing it as you go. Which, you know, it's, it's good crowd control. It's not great for bar cock. The backgrounds are brilliant looking, like... From a design perspective, they're gorgeous, um, but from, from a gameplay perspective, sometimes they're a little bit distracting. Like, they're almost too good. Like, I spend a lot of the time thinking, oh, look at that in that night, and then I've been blown up. These are the stars of the show. Like, the boss fights in this game are just, they've hit the nail on the head. This is how old school boss fights should be done. There are no super moves in this game, so there are no, I'll back myself into my corner, I'll use my super bomb and destroy everything on screen. There's none of that. Which is fine, because it's, it's not that kind of game. Eat dust. There we go. I didn't do so well that time, but winning's winning. Moving on. Because of the way this game's made, it has a lot of replay value. Like, you, you want to go back and... Like, you, you it'll, it'll beat you, but it'll just beat you. Because of the way the difficulty scales. Like I said, it'll beat you, but only just so you'll think, I can do that. So you'll go back and have another go, and another go, and have another go. I will very quickly, and I say very quickly, because I think I'm going to die very quickly, show you the divine difficulty level. And here you go. So there's a lot more bullets, and they move much faster. Shit, 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 shit. Right, so right off the bat, it's just... Like, oh... God, this is, yes, this isn't going to end well. This is going to show how limited my skills are with these kind of games. I love these kind of games, but I'm not as good at them as I would like to be. That's, that's a nice way of putting it. Shit. Dodge, dodge, dodge. This is more about dodging than, oh, cock. This is more about dodging than killing at this level. Like, just don't get hit. Uh, you don't have a tiny hitbox either. It's not, you know, it's not like some of the, the bullet hell shooters where it's just the center of you. Um, you have quite a large hitbox for this kind of game. Which makes it a little more difficult. I am in all kinds of trouble. I told you this was difficult. Oh, I forgot to talk about two-player mode and three-player mode and four-player mode. In single-player mode, you get lives. You get lives and continues. There are no more lives within the stages. There are no more continues within the stages. When you use them, you use them. When they've gone, they've gone. That simple. Um, in multiplayer mode... Yes, in multiplayer cock. In <laughs> multiplayer cock? That's a different game entirely. In multiplayer mode, um, you don't get lives at all. 
it's oh it's done. I did tell you it was hard. Uh, you don't get lives at all. Uh, you it's sort of Halo style of multiplayer. <laughs> it's an odd comparison, but it is. It's only if you die both at the same time, and you can pick up revives that drop out of enemies in the same way the coins do, and bring your like your ally back quicker, or you can wait for their timer to count down and it'll count you back in and then you back off and you're together again but you have to try and stay alive whilst the, the other one's dead it's a little bit easier it's a little bit better than lives because you can die a few times and it'll keep bringing you back and the game doesn't seem to get that much harder because there's extra people there so it is it is you know made a lot easier by having multiplayer which i suppose it would be it would be easy if there was more of you and finally i want to show you the challenges because these are just such a like a brilliant addition. Uh, the packs, every time you do one, you unlock the right to buy the next one. So it's like everything else in the game. You unlock it and then you have to pay for it with credits. So I'll show you some of the early ones. Oh, I've not even done that one yet. Probably, probably reason for that. I like these ones. So the sub T rings, I'll show you these ones. In this mode, you have to fly through the rings. It sounds easy, but it's it's not because you're being shot at constantly. So your positioning is key, but sometimes the bullets that are being fired at you give you no option. But to, to, oh god, and it goes mental. Come on, come on, come on! Oh, Bear in mind, this is the first stage of challenges, so this is what they consider to be the easiest of the challenges. Yes, okay, so you have to fly through the rings. Positioning is key. Um, if you blow up certain ones of these, the other ones go absolutely mental. So you have to try and blow them up in order. But oh nope. Damn it. God. This time. This is, I can feel it. This is, this is the time. Fuck, 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 fuck. Okay, maybe that, maybe that wasn't the time. This time. Holy shit, so I've already done it once, so how can it be? This is, oh, this is like when you managed to do the monkey bars for the first time as a kid. And you're like, mom, 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 look. And the first time she does, you fall flat on your stupid face. Screw it. I need to, I need to stop before I end up throwing the control pad. It is, oh, ooh. It is, it's, it's dangerous because of modern day control pads, like, and consoles. Do you remember old control pads for, like, the Mega Drive, where it was on a wire and there was no batches in it, so it didn't weigh anything? You could throw it and it would just swing back round and it wouldn't, it wouldn't go very far. Or you throw a control pad now, you take out, you know, two lamps of fish tank and granny. So, that's James Down. If you're a fan of these kind of games, this is definitely worth a look. If you've not, or you've just not played this kind of game before, this is a brilliant place to start, because I know the difficulty of these kind of things can be quite daunting, they just put people off. This will ease you into it. You, you could go in, like, having no knowledge of these kind of games, and spend a few hours in here, and come out relatively competent. If you spent a few days playing this, you'll come out extremely competent. You could take on some of the much harder games, so if you're thinking of getting into these kind of games, or you want to, but have always been a bit daunted by the concept, then this, this is the one. So, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. I am going to go and practice now, because some of that was just plain embarrassing.